Hi everyone, it's Henry here, and in this video we're going to take a look at the scheme I would use if I was painting an army of Craftworld Ulthway. Now, I really like the old school sort of second edition era uh, yellow helmets. Um, if you don't, then you could just use the same bone scheme that I use on the swords. But black and yellow is awesome, so let's paint. Over a black primer, I'm going to base coat the model using Vallejo Game Air Black. I'm spraying this through my airbrush 0.4mm needle and nozzle, which is our Cult of Paint Evolution by Harder and Steenbeck. I'm spraying at 25 psi, and I've thinned the paint about one to one with normal airbrush thinner. I know I'm spraying black over black, but it means that if we do make a mistake, then I've got the exact black I can go back to and cover up anything that I do, rather than trying to match the primer. But it's not complicated, just get it on, get a nice smooth coat on there. I want to keep this simple, and for me the trick to making black look black is to leave as much of it black as possible. So I've taken Vallejo Model Air Dark Sea Grey, I've thinned this one to one with thinner, maybe a touch more thinner, and I'm just going to hit the very sort of top of the model. You can see on the base there the difference between the black and the grey, it's not a huge difference, so when you're doing it you'll need to get a bit of a feel for when the paint's going and where it's going on, but you will notice it as you're doing it. So just a very light, broad highlight of this across the model. Now I give the whole model a light coat of a gloss varnish. This is because the next stage I'm going to pin wash, but I don't necessarily want it to run straight into the shadows, or in the recesses rather. I don't mind it staying on the surface a little bit. Also helps us see the shadows more. I like shading black using different colours. If you wanted less of a contrast, then you could absolutely just use a black oil, put that in there and it would make a difference. Or you could use a black contrast paint or a black ink, whatever like that. Add a bit of gloss, it'll look even darker. But for me, I like using different colours. So I've taken a very dark brown and I just want to make it a little bit more red. Uh, the paints I used here, I think, were bitume and dark brick red, but it really doesn't matter. A very dark brown and a red. So I'm going to mix a little bit of the red into my brown until I get the hue that I want. And all of this stems from uh, seeing a recent piece of artwork uh, of a Raven Guard Marine actually, um, and it had this lovely red uh, in the shadows. Using red in the shadows when you're painting black uh, is quite a common uh, thing to do, uh, and it does work really, really nicely. Now I'm adding in a little bit of mineral spirits. Now I use Winsor & Newton Sansador, it's an odorless artist grade mineral spirit and I'm just mixing that in until I've got the consistency of a wash. So I'm just checking it on the side of the dish there, making sure all the oil's mixed in. And then initially I apply it into the recesses just to make sure I get a really good deposit of the paint in there. And then quite gently just move the brush over the flat surfaces as well. Now I've used uh, the Abtalung 502 oils here. They're fast drying, which basically means they haven't got that much oil in them compared to a normal artist oil, and they've usually got an additive in there, additive in there, which makes them uh, dry a little bit quicker. Um, lots of brands do uh, the quick drying uh, oils. So whilst that's drying, we can get on and paint the yellow parts of the model. I'm going to base coat my yellow using uh, a sort of light red brown. This is Mornfang Brown by Games Workshop. You can see this whole scheme I'm doing with the airbrush, but you could absolutely do it with a hairy brush. Um, maybe dry brush that grey on that I used earlier. I just think the airbrush gives us a nicer finish. And I'm going to do quite an extreme pre-shade using Tamiya Flat White. So I've thinned this about four or five drops Tamiya X20A thinner to Tamiya Flat White. And by quite an extreme pre-shade, I mean I'm going to have a really bright white highlight, and I'm going to leave the shadows more or less pure Mournfang Brown with not a lot in between the two. It looks quite striking and I just really like the effect. And with army painting, as ever, I'm trying to keep it to as few colours as possible. So here I'm using Games Workshop Contrast Paint Nasdreg Yellow. I haven't thinned this at all. Still using the same pressure and the same airbrush that I've been using the whole time. I'm going to apply a few coats to this, letting it dry in between. And then we get a nice Simple yellow at the end of it. I'm going to use the same oil wash that I did on the black on the yellow. 
So again, if I was army painting these guys, I would be batching these at least in squads of 10, uh, if not more, for these stages. And obviously I've filled in the faceplate there, just using the same black that we base coated the model with. If you get too much on there, just clean your brush. Nice dry brush, and you can just wick up that excess. It means it stays where you want it. So I left this oil to dry for about an hour, and then I put the hairdryer on it. I did a uh, hot hairdryer, low power. Just moved it around the model for a minute or so, just making sure not to keep it in one area. I don't want to melt it or anything. And you can see it's dried, well, I think, with a really, really nice colour and effect on the model. Now, I just want to tie together the oil paint and the acrylic paints that are on the model. So I'm going to spray it with satin varnish. This is a Lucky uh, Ammo by MIG uh, satin. And that's because I don't necessarily want the red in the shadows to be dirt. It's very much just a shadow. So I want the same finish as the armour. Now an optional stage, but something I think is well worth doing, is just a little bit of edge highlighting. I don't mean this in the traditional sort of Games Workshop Heavy Metal style where we go around all of the edges, but I'm going to focus on the edges that will catch the light and particularly the focal areas of the model. So his chest, uh, his neck, all around, around his head, where you're going to look, especially on this because we've got that bright yellow head. You see I'm just tapping this along the edges. Sorry if you can hear that noise in the background. That's my dog waking up, having a good little shake. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the helmet. Uh, and this time I'm going to use a uh, Games Workshop Flash Gitch Yellow. And the grey I used was uh, AK uh, Sea Grey. But as usual, all the paints pop up at the bottom and they're in the description. Lots of people like to have uh, specific paints to use. I totally get that. But a lot of the time you're absolutely okay to substitute this with paints you already have or paints you can gain easier access to. Now, eye lenses, they're going to be fairly important because there's not a ton of colours on the model and I haven't done an eye lens demo for a while so I thought let's have a go and embarrass myself on camera. I'm going to go for blue. Uh, I'm base coating this using Steel Blue by Vallejo Model Air. It's just a nice dark blue. Then as that dries I'm going to take uh, a light blue. This is Arcane Blue by Privateer Press P3 but again just a light blue. And essentially what we do is just trace the shape. So it's almost like a triangle, the Eldar lenses. So we're just going to trace the two bottom sides. Leaving a tiny little bit of that dark blue on the upper edge. And then we'll grab a white. And right up in the corner, we'll just put a little dot of that. Can I do it? Well, I can, but it's absolutely tiny. Not big enough. Here's where the paint starts to dry out. You're tempted to press it harder. Maybe it spooshes everywhere. Actually, it's come out pretty good. So we're spending that little bit of time on the helmet because I think that's where people are obviously going to have their eye drawn towards. But I think the effect's pretty cool for not a lot of work. For the chainsword, or any of the wraithbone parts that you might have on the models, so the shuriken catapults, things like that, I'm going to base coat it using Games Workshop Zandri Dust. At this consistency, it took me four coats to get a smooth finish. Once that's dry, I'm going to make up a brown oil wash. So I've just used the brown that I had before, but without adding the red in. And just wash that over. I've done this separately for the video. If I was doing this for army painting, I would do, you know, the black and the yellow and the bone. And then I would do both oil washes at the same time, then leave that model overnight and come back to it to the next hobby session. And then for a little bit of edge highlighting, I'm going to take a Games Workshop Carac Stone. And just like on the armor, little tippy taps along the edges. I really, really like this style of highlighting, partly because you don't have to worry too much about it. If you make a mistake, it often just looks a bit like a chip. But I do think it brings a nice bit of definition to the model and a bit of character too. And then lastly is the gems. Uh, I've chosen red, so I'm going to base coat them using Mephiston Red by Games Workshop. So I think about where do I want the light to come from. So it's going to come from the top left as we look at this model, which means the white dot's going to be up in that top left corner. So I do a sort of crescent with the red. Then I do a thinner crescent with an orange. Uh, I think I've used Games Workshop Fire Dragon Bright here. 
again doesn't matter just any orange light orange is fine then over that i like to put a little glaze of games workshop contrast blood angels red just to pump the color up a little bit it's drying very quickly um, i've got filming lamps on it so it's drying quicker than it would normally but normally just blow on it it's fine then we put a little white dot in just like we would uh, with our eye lenses so a little reflection dot I think with the black being such a simple scheme it gives you that little bit of extra time to do a few of these gems and then I'll go in and just reapply that orange uh, crescent as well I also like to put a little bit of gloss varnish over my uh, gems doesn't look so good in photos but it looks nice on the table and there he is all together so a very very simple scheme uh, the reds that I've used on the hair and the handle is just Mephiston red uh, and then I've washed it with uh, Flesh Terrors red contrast super simple I think you'd be able to knock an army out like this very very quickly and I am very very tempted never have been before by Eldar or Ulthway uh, but having painted this dude up and seeing how quick I can get it done and how much I like the effect, I'm very, very tempted. So if you do give the scheme a go, please give me a tag and let me know. I'd love to see what it looks like across an army. Thanks very much for watching the video. If you'd like to see slightly more in-depth tutorials or some of our personal projects, consider checking out our Patreon supporting us there. Thanks very much to everyone who does. It allows us to produce these videos on YouTube each week, as well as videos over on the Patreon. I'll be back soon with the rest of the Craft World videos, much like this, so make sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on any of those. And I'll see you next time.